As we check these markets, let's bring in our good friend David Barton. He's here with us for the whole hour. He's a glutton for punishment. David, great to see you. Um, listen, I mentioned this earlier that all of the major indexes yesterday finished above the 50-day moving average. I don't know if that's significant or not, but there are those who say we may, we may have hit the bottom. What say you? Well, I always love that advice that we may have hit the bottom because they are exactly right. We may have. <laughs> This, um, my advice to investors, Ash, is to not be worrying about where the exact bottom is. And the reason is, is that they're not going to get it, mm. you, it mm. unless you get lucky, right? It's guesswork. The fact of the matter is, is that people need to have a portfolio that's aligned with the timing of their own goals. If it's a longer-term goal, they can have a longer-term mm. portfolio, and a short-term bottom matters less. But I don't think people like coming in heavily and having the market drop another 15% after they do. So people want to ease in with new money right now. It's just the prudent thing to do in this market environment. All right, let's talk about uh, Netflix in particular. And props to you, by the way. They'd expected a loss of 2 million subscribers. You predicted they were overstating their potential losses. You were right on the money. Uh, would you buy any Netflix stock now? Well, look, for people who want to go play those growth stories, especially that are at deep discounts from where they were once trading, I'd say 70, 75 percent down is a pretty deep discount. As you know, Ash, we're dividend growth investors, and so Netflix doesn't meet our criteria because they're not returning any cash to shareholders. But for people that want these types of growth plays, Netflix did set this up perfectly. They, they said, oh, we're going to lose $2 million. They lost less than $1 million. This Microsoft deal intrigues me. Going to an advertising-based mm -hmm. model could make up for the revenue they're losing because apparently everyone in the world is sharing their password. That seems to be... <laughs> the, big, the big problem at Netflix. So uh, we wouldn't buy it, but that doesn't uh, yes. mean it's not a buy. You mentioned dividends. You're our dividend guy. Uh, what do you have for us today? And What do you like? Well, you know, because Stuart's not here, I wanted to bring up Blackstone. I can't ever bring it up with him anymore because ah, he yes. constantly thanks me for when I recommended it to him about 400 percent ago. <laughs> but the reality is that they're <laughs> releasing earnings tomorrow and Blackstone's down quite a bit here in the last few months. It's a more mm. cyclical stock that's investing into the economy, right? They're buying real estate, private equity, things like that. The thing people forget Blackstone pays a big dividend because they generate a lot of fees because they're not buying this stuff with their own money. They're managing on behalf of investors. They do a very good job of it. So we like Blackstone as a dividend grower. The, the other company I mentioned is 3M. Again, it's just hard to find things mm -hmm. that are down a lot and consumer in consumer staples particularly. 3M is down way more than it deserves to be. They've grown the dividend for 90 years. Very good. That's a pretty good track record. Quickly, 30 seconds, David. Are you more bullish than bearish right now? I am selectively bullish. So it's not a non-answer. It's an important answer. <laughs> I do not want to buy the index. So yeah. you can call me bearish about buying the whole market. But I'm bullish about select opportunities where there's good value and good valuations. Very good. Shrewd as always, David Barnson. You're here for the whole hour, so uh, stay, stay right there. Over in San Diego, masks are returning to the classroom. The school board president is now telling students that they feel uncomfortable about wearing a mask. Tough. They should simply not come to school. As you can imagine, parents are pushing back on the rules and taking legal action now against the San Diego school board. Watch this. Well, David Barnson, come back in. You're a father. You founded a school in beautiful Newport Beach. What would you say to this school board president? Look, I don't normally say things for shock value. I really don't. But I'm going to say this because I believe it. Mm. It's child abuse. I think it's child abuse. No. It's so anti-scientific, it's anti-social, it's anti-development, and it's wrong. There's no reason for it. They're stifling these kids' ability to interact with one another. This entire COVID thing is over. People will still get colds. They'll still have some symptoms. They can stay home. But this thing of wearing a mask and forcing it at school, it's absolutely unbelievable that we're still dealing with this, and it infuriates me.
Wow, no holding back, and I totally hear what you're saying, David. I think you're absolutely right. It is so ridiculous, it defies explanation. All right, Dave. Now this, the top enforcement attorney at the SEC is warning about digital engagement practices used by brokerages that encourage more buying, often referred to as the gamification of investing. And we know that that could be very dangerous. Come back in, David Barnson. Do, we, do you think we need to crack down on this so-called gamification? Okay, so I have two takes here. First of all, I don't mm. care as much about the regulation side because I want people to be responsible for themselves. And I think one of the greatest ways to keep mm. people from touching a hot stove is for them to touch a hot stove. They usually won't do it a second time. But let me say something. This is not a game. It's investing. It's not a video game. It's real money. There's real consequences. And this idea of us creating an entertainment culture where what these they're talking about Robin Hood, by the way. I don't I mean, that's really who the regulators Mm. are targeting here. And it is totally irresponsible. Mm. It is reckless. Do I need the regulators to fix it? Maybe not. But no, we should not be treating investing with real life money as if it's a game. This is serious stuff. And some of us take it pretty seriously. Absolutely. David, thank you very much. Uh, Things have gotten so bad, David, that uh, grocery store owners are bringing in their own security force. What do you say to that? Well, you know, this isn't just a law and order story. It's a market story, too. There's a price to this. It gets priced into the market when people can't expect safety, when owners of stores and businesses have to expect that they're going to suffer losses from vandalism and theft and all these things. Look, those stats are terrible. Put San Francisco up, it even gets worse. This is totally unacceptable, and it comes from the same place, a lack of regard for law and order from those who are supposed to be keeping us safe. The stores are supposed to track their own thieves. They don't have computers at the district attorney's office. This is unbelievable. It really is. And, you know, I know desperate times sometimes create desperate measures. But in this case, it's just criminals not fearing the consequences of their actions. Right. That's exactly right. It's just it just it makes me so mad. Um, David Barnson, thank you so much, David, for taking the time and joining us for the entire hour. Always great to have you along. Thank you. Thanks, Ash.